I'm not going to say it couldn't have happened anywhere else, but I think it was supposed to happen at Father Ryan. When I think of Ryan wrestling, I think of a program where there's a lot of pride, a lot of tradition, but even to a point people don't want to let down everybody that came before them. If I were an employer looking to hire someone and on their resume, they had that they were a wrestler, especially at Father Ryan. <laughs> Boy, they would go to the top of the list. <laughs> it's a lot in like uh, religion in a sense that there's something bigger and better than yourself. Nineteen sixty-nine season, uh, my sister dated Jim Hosmer, who was the starter at 106. And so uh, one night we came to a wrestling match. And he went out and pinned in about 30 seconds. And after that, I said, that's, that's me. I got to do that. Father Fennell was the first coach. And uh, we did a lot of training and a little bit of wrestling. And uh, it showed. Well, I knew the, uh, the Boston Crab and the, all the stuff you watch on Saturday morning, you know, the uh, uh, Nick Goulis wrestling. I remember Coach Drennan coming up and saying, I want you at, on the stage at such and such time. I said, for what? He said, for wrestling. Well, of course, the only thing we knew about was what we'd seen on television, and that wasn't very attractive. I was on the freshman football team, and I weighed about 90 pounds and was trying to play in the line. And he finally came over to me one day and said, you know, I admire your courage, but he said, how would you like to go up against someone your own size? And I said, Coach, there isn't anybody my own size. He said, I'm talking about wrestling. They first thought it was, you know, you know, a, a joke, seriously. You know, it, it went out like, you know, y'all staying in shape for football season. It was new. We were getting beat up when we were young, and we learned from getting beat up to be successful. And I think it turned into something else uh, several years later that people finally looked at it as, hey, this, this is something real that they can grab a hold of. Uh, the, the other students would come to the matches, they knew just a little bit less than we did, you know, about what was going on. But they, you know, it, the sport's so exciting that, man, they would really get into it. All 87 pounds of me in, uh, as a freshman, I thought I was a tough guy. Well, I proved that wrong pretty quick. Lost the uh, first 13 matches in a row. You know, when you're uh, five foot nothing and a little over 100 pounds, uh, if you're a wrestler, you walk around the school like you're the biggest guy on campus. Well, if you look at 69, a lot of those people go back to grammar school. If you look at that picture, there's a lot of those folks that literally were friends in first grade. And we certainly knew that the, it was a band of brothers for sure. We saw ourselves as doing something that no one else had done and no one thought we could do. We would get beat, oh, horribly. But somewhere along that line, I don't remember freshman year or some sort of commitment was made that we were going to try to see if we couldn't win that state. Joe had a goal and thought that we could accomplish it with the talent that we had and Yogi uh, uh, Walsh breaking the barrier that year and becoming our first state champ. After my junior year, I said, I'm going to do everything I can to win this. And every day at practice, I thought about winning the state championship. When I was running, I, every time I ran a lap, I was thinking this for the state championship. I don't think anybody now can appreciate how Chattanooga so dominated the sport. I mean, you literally, to this day, if I drive Chattanooga, I, I know my blood pressure's got to go up. Because you knew when you started that way, you were in for a fight. I'm really proud that uh, I was on the team that came in third in the state, the first team outside of Chattanooga to ever place in a state tournament. He had a goal that we could take a state championship and bring it back to Nashville and to Father Ryan, but to break that barrier down, it makes you feel proud that you were part of something that maybe is connected to the program that they have now. My uncle was a two-time state champion and he, he wrestled uh, in the same thing what I did basically because we have our new throwbacks, which I think is really cool because, you know, I can I don't know, you feel a special connection to the guys who used to wrestle because you know what they went through and they know what you're going through. It definitely is the coaching, you know, from uh, Coach Drennan, Coach Garman, and then Pat's been here for so many years. 
30, 30 something years. And it's definitely a result of the coaching. I think Coach Drennan is probably as good a coach that I've ever had and ever will have seen. I just really respect the man. Um, I respect him for what he taught us about um, using a sport to grow boys into authentic men who care about people. Next to my father, Joe Drennan has had a bigger impact on my life than any other man. I think he was born to do this. I don't know, I don't, how do you explain that? Because he literally knew nothing. Never had been around anybody that was a wrestler. I was always their biggest advocate when it came to Pat, and they probably don't know that. Um, when Pat would get frustrated, I had to kind of build him back up, encourage him, you know, and say, look, these boys need you. I think in a society that's very disposable, um, our kids uh, today uh, are learning the lessons from the person who taught their, taught their fathers. But we took a plastic fork and broke it off in the old lock that was on the back door that we went into. Now, if you tie to put a key into there after you've had a plastic fork, we thought he'd call off practice. Again, he looks around and looks up about three stories, and you remember the old gym. It got so hot in there, they left some of the windows open. He had Doug Hennert or Joe Morales, I can't remember which one, shimmy up the drain pipe and go through the window and cover around the front door and let us in. You know, we didn't get snow days. Coach Simpson or Coach Jemison would come around and pick up the wrestlers. And if school didn't meet, you still had practice. Well, snow was predicted and Coach Garman made us spend the night in the chapel at Father Ryan because he was afraid we might miss practice. So we all came over, we camped out, and then we were able to practice the next day to make weight for the tournament. Well, I think it's the dedication of these three guys back here. You know, I always thought Joe was one of the guys that never liked losing. And he was a strong competitor. And, and Coach Garman, you know, went right uh, in his footsteps and continued on with that tradition of excellence. And so did Pat. You know, and it's very, very hard after you get to the third coach to stay on top. And Pat has done that. My picture's on the wall back there between two great coaches. I always considered myself, I was just a link in the chain. And it worked. One of the wrestlers told me several years ago, he said, Coach Drennan could, would say everything in the world, call you whatever, he said, but, and he, Tears came down his face as he told me. He said, but I knew in my heart he loved me. And Pat is the most humble person um, I know. And he would, he would be um, embarrassed to think that young men are driven uh, to succeed for him. But it's because they love him. And I, and I get the same sense that uh, each generation of wrestlers has uh, loved and cared for each of those three coaches in the same way. Definitely milkshakes. Probably chocolate. Lasagna. It was a cheeseburger. Ritz Fitz peanut butter cookies and then she'd dip them in white chocolate. Everything in sight. You know, once, once you've made your last way in, you're good to go. And the big highlight of the day would be eating a Snickers bar at lunch. And it would take 10 minutes to eat a Snickers bar. You'd eat it just, you know, you eat the chocolate first and the caramel, then the nuts. It's quite a process. At the end of each season, uh, Gertrude would, as soon as the matches were over, she would take me to Shoney's and I'd eat an entire strawberry pie. Both my sons, for some reason, would always watch the Food Channel because they couldn't eat what they wanted to and they would always watch the Food Channel. <laughs> you get to that point where you're not really hungry anymore, you're just thirsty. So the hunger just leaves you and you're just thirsty for water and your lips are all chapped up. And you're just like, oh. I mean, I appreciate food to this day because of wrestling back in high school. You know, most young men dream and fantasize about girls. When you're losing that kind of weight, you fantasize about food. <laughs> you know, it was like a love-hate relationship. Um, it's a hard sport. And, uh, and practice is difficult. They win their championships in the off season, not during the season. 
And these kids work harder than anybody that I know of. Hard work. I think we outwork everybody. At our house, um, I used to have an oriental rug in the living room. That was not an oriental rug, that was the mat. That was, you know, the edge of the mat. And when they went off the edge, then they had to come back to start. Learn wrestling comes with sacrifices. There's times where you're like, I just don't want to be here, but you just got to push through it. I think wrestling does a better job of teaching overcoming adversity than any other sport I've ever seen. This room here is, is probably one of the best classrooms. What I remember, like on a grand scale about wrestling here was kind of prolonged period of sacrifice and discomfort for the sake of personal achievement and as well as, as team goals. Um, and that's something that's always kind of as a theme or, or, or just philosophically stuck with me. I had one kid that came back from a Marine boot camp and he said, well, it was tough, but it wasn't as tough as wrestling practice. Wrestling, it's it takes out all the drama of, of life because it's me and the other guy. If he beats me, he's better than me. If I beat him, I'm better than him. He said, I can live with anything as long as you give it your all and finish on empty. Give me everything you got and then we'll just go with it at the end of the day. They feel pressure when they go out there. There's family that come and they know when they put that singlet on, you know, they're expected to go out there and, and, and do good. They push you to the limit, to your breaking point right before you're breaking and pull you back. A lot of stuff you learn in wrestling about, you know, goal setting, hard work, you know, being disciplined, patient, you know, it, you can go on. Motivation, respect, taught him to be a part of a team. And you see a few of them break. I mean, honestly and truly, have you not seen uh, almost literally grown men break in this room? And, 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 but there's enough involvement and there's enough love and sacrifice and commitment by everybody, but kind of pull you back. They put the time and the effort in and, and you know they're exhausted, but they walk out on that mat and they give it their all. Everybody's always looked to Father Ryan as the pinnacle of wrestling schools. When you put on the Father Ryan singlet, you know that you got all this tradition behind you with the 50 years and all, with, uh, with all the three coaches have built. When I was, was a young coach, this was always the, the standard uh, in wrestling. How do you do against Father Ryan? You go to tournaments and you see not only people that you wrestled with or who you remember watching wrestle, you see them come back to you know, check out, you know, how's Father Ryan doing this year? You know, how, how are they looking? The guys that wrestled 50 years, 50 years ago are still as big a part of the family as the guys that wrestled uh, just a few weeks ago. Joe started it, but through Bobby Garman and obviously through Pat Simpson, they have never forgotten what began this whole process and has honored us. It's something that I enjoy watching. Uh, they, um, they perform at a high level, win or lose, they jump up, say congratulations to the coach, and, uh, and go back and get ready for the next match. The friendships and the jokes that people share over time, I know there's still stories about my Uncle Kevin referee and, you know, stuff he used to do. And Growing up, I've seen all the success we've had, and it's an honor to be able to go out there and continue that tradition. And I just think it was, it was pride as being a Catholic, and I think what the, the families are so close and they keep following each other, it's that tradition. This is my favorite match ever. When we were in the old locker room at Ryan before the match with Notre Dame, Coach Trinity, who was never one to get emotional, I mean, he'd, get a, he'd fuss at you, he'd, he'd stay all over you to motivate you like that. But he starts to say the Our Father, he always says the Our Father. He was doing the prayer, and he got very emotional. Well, a tear gets in his eye, and he goes, Jimmy, Frank, We took it over. Ooh, it brings back memories of that. When we went on that mat, you would have thought we were Zen Buddhist. And we came out of that locker room, and I'm telling you to the man, I think we would have all attacked tail with two buckets of water. When you step on the mat in your Father Ryan sing with it, you represent Father Ryan as a person and as a wrestler, and you give it everything you have. That Father Ryan wrestlers are, you know, they're, they're a big deal.
if you make it in wrestling, then you can, you can make it anywhere.